Hello, and thank you for joining me today as I talk through uh, some of the ebbs and flows in my own knitting and how I'm trying to find balance between knitting and other hobbies. Hello, and thank you for joining me today for another knit and chat. Um, I will be working on my November jacket. Let me spread it out on the needles for you. Um, my November jacket. This is a pattern by Petite Knit that has been on my needles for at least a month at this point. This is one of my longest standing whips. Um, and I'm knitting it with the We Are Knitters Happy Chain yarn, which is actually discontinued now. Um, I did not know that until I ran out of yarn for this project. So that was fun. Um, but yes, I'm knitting it with the Happy Chain yarn and it's a, an all over brioche cardigan with double knit um, features. So it's been it's been really enjoyable to knit. It's been a very long knitting project. Um, brioche, of course, grows really slowly and it's a quite oversized project. I've also run into a few issues with it um, as far as I ran out of this pink and luckily I have three more balls in different colors. Um, one being white, gray, and then I also have a ball of this blue. So <laughs> I'm just adding as much length as I can. This is not going to be as long as the petite knit pattern recommends, but I'm knitting as much as I can, and then I'm going to dye this all brown at the end. So um, I will be knitting on this today. We'll see how much actual knitting I do because I tend in knit and chats to start a row and then get distracted by my train of thought and just abandon the knitting but um we'll at least have a little bit maybe i'll add some footage of me knitting without talking we'll see um but i wanted to sit down today and talk a little bit about ebbs and flows of my knitting motivation and how i'm trying to balance knitting with other hobbies um if you watched my 2024 knitting intentions video. I'll try to link it here. Um, I talked in that video about how one of my intentions is to knit less and I'm actually doing that. I'm proud of like, I really slowed down on knitting quite as frequently lately um, in favor of other hobbies and seeing friends. And honestly, my work has gotten a lot busier. So in favor of doing other things, I've been knitting less, but then I've felt a lot of stress and kind of guilt about the fact that my whips are taking longer. I mean, I mentioned that this project has been on my needles for about a month now, and that's a really, really long time for me. I know for a lot of people who are not monogamous knitters, that's not that long, um, but I'm a fairly monogamous knitter. And so having one whip just the for an entire month is annoying. Um, and it feels like it just takes a long time and I'm really feeling an itch to cast on new things. I should note that while working on this, I have also finished a birthday gift for a friend. I made the, um, it's called the Nurture Bralette by Celine Phaeton. And I'll, I'll insert a picture of me wearing it here. So I did also knit that in, <laughs> took a break from this, knit that up. And I just finished um, a pair of socks that I can show you um, as well. So I have actually finished two things while working on this, but this whip still feels like it's dragging and I'm not putting in enough time to it and I only have two balls of yarn to put into it left it should just be done like I really want this done by the end of next week and yeah just feeling a lot of like stress about whips taking so long or the fact that like I haven't cast on anything that I talked about in my spring knitting plans video yet because I'm trying to finish this off and not knitting as much so um it's been really interesting because one of my intentions is literally knitting less. And then while I'm knitting less, I'm like stressed about it. So yeah, I just figured this would be a good thing to bring to a wider audience and talk to you all about, because I imagine I'm not the only person who 
feels this internal struggle when other things in life come up and you can't knit as much and like changing my expectations around how long projects take and trying to maybe re-strike motivation in knitting, things like that. So I wanted to see if others are also struggling with things like that and just bring my own experience here. Um, so I'm going to start off and talk a little bit about what I've been doing instead of knitting and that kind of balanced part of my life. And then we'll talk um, about, you know, the knitting specifics and maybe how I want to move forward. So first of all, instead of knitting lately, I have been reading a lot, which has been wonderful. Um, I mentioned in a podcast that I started reading the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I did. I actually listened to it, um, but I listened to that series. And since then, I've also been reading just some other books. Um, yeah, I've just been reading a lot. There's too many to name so quickly, but I've been reading more, both listening to audiobook wise and sitting down and physically reading, um, which I do knit and listen to audiobooks. So that does give me a chance to kind of do both. But I find that my knitting is not as productive when I'm listening to an audiobook because I am just very focused on the plot that's happening. Um, I also, since I'm listening to more audiobooks, like I listen to audiobooks while I'm working and um, while I'm knitting and showering or walking, things like that. Just whenever I can have something playing, I'll have that playing. And I used to always um, watch knitting podcasts or knitting videos while I was working. You know, I work from home and I like to have something in the background. So I would have like a knitting podcast on while I was working, similar to, you know, how I have audiobooks now. Um, but now that I'm listening to more audiobooks, that means that I'm also watching less knitting content. And that also has made me kind of stressed of like my YouTube subscription feed is so full right now of amazing videos from people I really love um, and really want to catch up on and know, you know, what they're knitting on and things like that. But audiobooks have just been calling my name a little bit more. Um, and that has extended to Instagram as well. Of I've just, I've spent less time on my phone um, in favor of reading and audiobooks and other things. So yeah, that's kind of been the first group of tasks or like, yeah, reading has been kind of the first hobby that has really been taking my time away from knitting. Um, I've also been walking a lot more, which has been awesome. Um, I'm really enjoying just lately, I've been going for like three, four mile walks. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in kilometers. Um, but, you know, that takes me about an hour and a half, two hour walks um, just around my neighborhood. And I just wander into my neighborhood until I'm lost and then find my way home. And I've really been enjoying doing that. I listen to an audiobook while I'm doing it and just like find that I get a lot of disconnection from the stress of work or home life or I don't know why I'm saying home life, like chores, things like that. Just it's a really great way for me to disconnect, to be moving my body and relax a lot. Knitting gives me a similar sense of calm, but I think the added endorphins of working out are just really nice. Um, so and being outside um, has been really, really nice. So I've been doing that a lot. Um, I'd say at least three times a week, I go on kind of a very long walk and then try to go on shorter walks throughout the week as well. Um, I've also been seeing friends a lot more, which um, I'm definitely a very introverted person. So it's been seeing friends a lot more for me is like, oh, I do things with people twice a week. <laughs> um, but that is a lot for me. And I find that not only then am I spending time with people, which I don't want to say takes time away from, but gives me less time to knit. If I'm spending my after work hours um, with friends, then I don't have those same hours to then knit. Um, but also after I come home from seeing people being out for a long time, I'm often too tired to knit. Um, I definitely like have that kind of social battery that gets drained. So has led to a little bit less knitting. Um, and then finally, work. my work has just been a lot busier lately. Um, I used to have a lot. I started a new job about three months ago. And so for the first three or so months, I had a lot 
of time where I was sitting in meetings, listening in to get familiar with something or doing training courses, things like that, where um, I was actually able to knit while listening to those meetings and it helped me focus a lot. So I had a lot more knitting time just scattered throughout my day because every time there was a meeting where I didn't need my camera on and I, you know, wasn't responsible for reporting on anything. I was just listening. Like the knitting really helped me focus. And so I got more, like I probably got at least an hour a day um, during my work day of that knitting time. And now that I'm hitting about the three month mark that is kind of going away, um, I'm actively participating in a lot more meetings. Um, and I just, I have a lot more tasks on my plate. I've also often been working more than 40 hours a week, um, which has its, eh, hopefully I don't want to do that that often, but, um, a few times I have had to work more and then been so tired again that I don't feel like knitting. I just want to turn my brain off and just like scroll on my phone or just, read and not um, do something that is, I mean, knitting for me is mostly mindless, but still, I don't know, sometimes it feels like too much at the end of a long day if, you know, a lot of my job too is doing um, pretty repetitive things, um, reminding people of the same things or making PowerPoints that I've done a million times before. I just, I implement a lot of processes that I've done a ton. So um, I feel like after a day of kind of doing these repetitive tasks, I don't necessarily want to go knit, which is a bunch of repetitive tasks. So yeah, I also, I should note, I work East Coast hours. I'm based in um, Colorado. So that's a two hour time difference. So my work day starts around 6.30. Um, and I end around three, but, um, lately I've just had a lot more meetings that are even earlier than that. So I've been starting or waking up at about five, um, to get ready for the day, start by six ish and then yeah, work through the day and then oftentimes end up working to like four or so, which again, is not that late. I mean, it's fine. A lot of people work longer hours way more often than I do. Um, I'm just kind of noting all of this to say I had less time for knitting because of other things. And that's not necessarily a negative. Like everything that I'm doing is really important right now. I'm enjoying my work and enjoying kind of really getting oriented to this new working environment and having like these chances to fully test slash prove myself as I'm hitting the three month mark and really being tasked with like big things now. Um, it's all very exciting. Same with walking and seeing more people. Those are wonder and reading. Those are all wonderful reasons to be knitting less. And again, that was my goal. <laughs> One of my intentions and goals for the year was to knit less in favor of other hobbies. And that's what I'm doing. I'm really happy with myself for actually doing it. Uh, but it is still bringing up a lot of kind of weird feelings about the fact that I'm knitting less. I've found myself thinking a couple times like, oh gosh, am I going to give up knitting? Like feeling this like immense kind of fear or like this anxiety about like, I feel like I can, this sounds dramatic, but I think lately I can almost feel myself changing. I'm in my mid twenties, my prefrontal cortex is almost developed. And, um, I have been doing a lot of things lately to make my life better and more balanced and kind of expand my comfort zone more. So, you know, seeing more people for me as a very introverted person, I've, I don't see that many people. I don't call that many people, my friends, like I have a small circle and, I have a pretty limited social life and that that fills me up like that is very that makes me very happy but i have lately really tried to expand it a little bit more see my coworkers um outside of work more often see um friends more like i've really been intentional lately about i have two friends who like i love both of them to death i went to college with them and been really intentional lately about trying to see them more and go on like triple dates together and things like that um, to just 
expand my social circle because even though I like it being small, I think it is better for me to have a little bit more socialization in my life and just get out of my own kind of comfort zone and routines more often. Um, so that's really positive. That's a really positive step I'm taking. And I'm proud of myself for doing that because a lot of the times I'm like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to. Um, but it's really positive that I'm doing that. And it's really positive that, um, you know, I'm reading more, getting kind of back into that. And also the kinds of books I've been reading are drastically different than what I would have read in the past. I used to be very, I don't want to say pretentious, but I used to be one of those people that only wanted to read books that were a classic and would teach me something or were nonfiction and would, you know, help me learn something. But lately I've been reading a lot more kind of casual fantasy or romantic books that just are fun and lighthearted and um, just help me disconnect from my day a little bit more. And that has honestly been really great for my mental health to just like have this fake world where the the stakes feel so much larger than my day-to-day -day life. Um, and there's still great lessons in those books too of like seeing the character development of some of these books is amazing and has applicable lessons. So that's kind of been expanding my mindset and the way I think about my life just because obviously they're fake. I know that they're, they're fiction stories, but just like, oh, things could be worse. I could be, you know, being hunted by a dragon or like, things like that could be way worse, but I'm just stressed about sending an email. Like it's fine. Um, and yeah, I don't know. That sounds funny, but just, I think that reading and connecting more with nonfiction or fiction stories and just like hearing more perspectives through fiction has been really instrumental for me lately of kind of expanding the way I think about the world around me um, and allowing for more gray areas. Um, it's been been great allowing for more kindness and empathy too. I don't know. I don't know exactly how to verbalize that, but I do definitely feel like reading for me has been almost an exercise in looking internally of like how I'm reacting to these storylines or these characters and what does that say about me of like, okay, I love this character in the story. Why? Like, do I feel like I'm similar to them or do I want to be like them or just things like that of like, it's, it's a very good way to kind of get at introspection. I think where like, I'm able to kind of reflect on, <laughs> reflect on myself through someone else's story. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's just been really positive for me to be reading more and disconnecting more. And I'm reading a lot of the same books as some of my friends. So I've been able to kind of talk to my friends um, about things that are not our lives exactly. Cause you know, it gets tiring every day of being like, yep, still worked. I worked today <laughs> and I'm going to bed. Um, instead being able to say like, oh my gosh, this storyline was crazy and have that connection source. Um, as well. So yeah, reading has just, it's been really valuable for me to expand around me. And then walking, I already mentioned, is just such a good way to disconnect from my job and just get out of my environment. I mean, knitting has a similar kind of meditative of like, you know, either step after step or stitch after stitch, like just keep going. You're just focusing on what's ahead of you, working on this. But the Thing that I really appreciate about walking versus knitting is I'm out of my house so I'm not seeing the dishwasher that I need to unload or the counters that I should really rinse off or the fact that my cat threw up again <laughs> and I need to clean it up um, you know I kind of can fully disconnect from that and be outside of my own environment and just enjoy what I'm listening to, enjoy what's around me and yeah, have like a really great moment of disconnection. Also, as I mentioned, you know, the added endorphins of exercising. I know it's, it's just walking. I'm not like running, but I think there are some endorphins from 
just getting outside, moving my body, um, going up hills. And I love kind of getting lost. Um, finding my way back is really fun. Um, and I love to like the last walk I took that was about five miles long. I made it a goal to just take a photo every time I saw something that made me smile. So it's taking photos of like a dirt path I was walking on that last time it rained, I guess a dog had walked on it. So there were little embedded paw prints and um i found a house with a chicken coop and took a picture of the chickens or i saw a little um lawnmower where someone had put it's like a um one of those seated lawnmowers and someone had put a um little frog on the seat of the lawnmower like a frog ceramic statue um so yeah i just i've really been trying to enjoy those walks, make them mindful for myself. And they're a really great exercise in mindfulness and make me really happy. But I also, you know, if I'm walking two hours after work, then I get home and I cook. And by the time I sit down, it's like seven and I go to bed at nine. So I really only have about two hours to knit, eat dinner, watch TV, like do whatever I want. Um, and so I usually only end up knitting about an hour on those nights that I um, go for a walk. So yeah, there's just, you know, and sometimes I go to bed earlier so that I can read. So sometimes I have 30 minutes of knitting before I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed. Or like, you know, between watching TV, knitting, looking at my phone, I'll have 30 minutes before I'm like, okay, it's 8.45, 8.30. I just want to get in bed now so I can read for an hour before I actually want to go to sleep. So yeah, my knitting has just definitely had less time to do it lately, which is fine. That's actually a good thing. I've also, I don't think I'm the only person who, when the weather gets nicer, I knit less. Not only because um, I'm out doing other things, but also I'm not motivated to finish like a huge sweater in the spring because it's 65 degrees like where am I gonna wear this <laughs> inside I guess I'm only gonna wear this in my desk um, until winter comes again so I have a lot a lot less motivation there same you know last summer I saw this too of I basically just made socks for like two three months straight um, and that was that was all I did and I can probably see that that'll happen again or something similar will happen again where my knitting kind of does just ebb and flow with the seasons, um, which makes a lot of sense. And I do want this to kind of be a hobby that can have that ebb and flow. But yeah, just like the internal stress of feel like my life's expanding and I'm growing right now. And I'm just worried that knitting will fall away from that life. Even though I'm in control of my growth, um, I'm in control of my life and can choose what hobbies I do. And I know I love knitting, so I know it'll come with me, but I don't know. I just have this fear of like, oh my gosh, what if, what if I don't knit anymore? And I've made this channel where I talk to people about it and I've made so many knitting friends. And if life just evolves and takes me away from it, how am I going to feel about that? Um, and it gives, it, it makes me anxious. It makes me a little stressed, but I think that that's silly um, because well, I just have to remind myself that that anxiety is silly because I can control that and I do still love my knitting. I'm just doing it less. And I've wanted for years to become a more balanced person. I mean, spending 30 hours a week knitting I'm treating, I'm treating my knit, I've treated my knitting in the past like a full-time job. Like I've definitely knit more than I've worked some weeks, you know, and well, I love that. And I just, I appreciate what knitting has, has given me in the past as far as some, like an alternative to work before I was knitting. I was also going to school full-time, but I was working and going to school and I just, always felt this drive to keep working on either schoolwork or work and felt unproductive when I wasn't working and knitting. 
came into my life at a time where I really needed it to help me set up work-life balance because there was then something in my life motivating me to stop working and actually respect my balance between work and life and enjoy knitting. And yeah, that really meant a lot to me. The fact that like, you know, I, I live with my boyfriend, I have friends and family, but I don't see them every night of the week. And my boyfriend and I are very much kind of, we're both very introverted people and both of our hobbies are very um, kind of self-directed. And so in the past, like I'd finish work and it would be like, okay, am I just going to watch TV all night and do nothing? Or why don't I just keep working, get this done? And, you know, I wasn't spending that much time with my boyfriend because he was doing his own hobbies and we have designated like this is our date night. We go do things together, but not every night was spent with him. And so it was either work or sit alone. And knitting really gave me something to look forward to and to really respect my work-life balance. Um, so I do not think that knitting like 40 hours a week is necessarily that bad of a thing. Um, if that's what I had, but I just think that moving forward, I do want to find a better balance between knitting and the rest of my life and have it be less of an obsessive almost thing. So um, it is valuable that I'm knitting less and I'm growing in a way I really want to be. And it's valuable that I'm finding more friends and I'm getting outside more and exercising more. Those are amazing things. Um, and I just, I feel like I'm getting better at going with the flow of life, which in the past I've not been good at. Um, in the past I've heavily, heavily stuck to routines and really struggled with getting outside of those, but I am getting better at flowing with what each week brings and just letting kind of priorities shift as they need to. Um, so yeah, I'm getting better, but it's, it's still, still hard. It's still interesting. Um, so I guess I also want to talk about kind of what balance with knitting means to me. And I've kind of directly been getting at that or indirectly been getting at that, but I think that it is important to make it explicit as far as, you know, I know that these two things are true when it comes to I'm knitting less and that's good. And I still feel stressed about that. Um, and so how I'm striking a balance between those and how I'm really trying to go forward to make sure that I am continuing these new hobbies, continuing to do new things that I enjoy and love um, and kind of expand my circle or expand my comfort zone um, while still knitting and engaging in this community and doing something that I do also really love. And I've been thinking a lot about how, well, I felt for a long time, like I needed to establish like a schedule for each week of like, find kind of the perfect spot for each of my hobbies of making like, oh, well, on Mondays, it's walking night and Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Sunday, I'll go on walks. But then the rest of the week, you know, I'll do workout classes. Um, but that's like my knitting time and I'll do two socializations a week of just kind of trying to make these rules for myself to impose a balance. Um, thinking a lot about like, okay, what nights can I just kind of reserve for my knitting and what nights can I designate as the nights I go on walks and things like that, that just, it was making me really stressed out to think in those terms because I don't know exactly how many hours I need slash want to knit a week. I don't know how many hours I'll socialize a week. All of that is kind of very up to change. Um, and so I've been trying to think a lot more about balance in terms of 
kind of a flow, um, less in terms of like a strict, here's the schedule, here's the how we're fitting into everything and exactly balancing the hours I spend on different hobbies and work um, and instead trying to just listen to what my body wants as far as walking or what my mind needs um, or you know what works demanding of me to or what my friends are up to to basically just really set within each week find a state of balance um, and allow myself to be pulled more in one way than another when that um, thing feels more pressing or like if I'm craving socialization more as the weather's nice and I'm craving, you know, a happy hour with coworkers and seeing friends and going on walks. Like I want to sacrifice knitting time or not sacrifice, but I want to feel like, okay, I can knit less this week and maybe next week I'll knit more or I won't. And either way is fine and find that kind of internal balance for myself and not feel stressed that I'm changing my plans or, um, you know, if, if I don't knit for one week, I don't want to feel like I'm giving it up. And, um, that's still like very much something I'm working through for myself. I think that it's very hard to rationalize that for myself. I mean, I'm just, I'm such a routines person and, breaking outside of routines has always been challenging for me. And so it feels challenging to not have a reliable, like I'm going to work on this much this week and not then feel like, you know, whatever I did this week is the rest of my life. That's something that I really struggle with as far as, you know, this week, like I, um, I had like, three nights in a row of doing social things. So Tuesday through Thursday, basically got no knitting done because I was out being social. And by the end of the week, I was like, oh my God, this is horrible. Like I'm not knitting at all. I'm, I'm never going to finish anything again. I've made this whole channel and I'm going to have to abandon it. And feeling like really stressed that um, kind of my reality of one week is my reality for the rest of rest of time. And um I just, I want to really focus on the next few months on having that flow um, and feeling that I can not knit at all one week and that's totally fine. And then some weeks I may knit so much that my hands hurt or I'll finish three things in a week. Um, I've done that in the past and I want to be okay with that kind of flow or change um, and kind of embody it less or like, um, I don't know what the word is, internalize. I want to internalize <laughs> less just generally um, when it comes to my routines, what's around me. Like I want to have, to feel more like a fish in a river rather than the whole river maybe is a good way to put it. Um, where, you know, I'm moving with the currents and I have some control over where I'm going, but I'm trying to just move with the currents rather than just being the river and pushing everything forward. And yeah, I just, I want to feel less like I am my routines. And in the past I felt that and like feel more able to change. And so I think that the metaphor works of being the fish in the river rather than the river. I don't know if it fully works, but um, yeah, just let let more things happen to me and try to be in control of less. And that includes letting each kind of week's demands speak to me when it comes to, am I feeling really tired this week and not able to devote the energy I need to my knitting projects? Am I feeling really motivated to knit this week? And maybe I'm going to walk less so that I can knit maybe like I really want to just listen to myself more and listen to my week more to plan around that rather than feeling stress about 
not engaging in one hobby as much or like not feeling perfect balance within each moment. Like I'm striving for overall balance, not day-to-day -day balance. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah. I think that that is kind of what I can say about how I'm feeling right now when it comes to knitting motivation ebbs and flows, when it comes to trying to find balance between knitting and kind of the rest of my life, I guess. Um, and of course, those areas also need to be balanced. So yeah, I think it's such a big topic and I definitely am not perfectly expressing myself, I don't think. And I definitely am kind of only scratching the surface when it comes to finding this balance. And I, of course, am very privileged when it comes to free time. I am in my mid twenties. I just live with my, my boyfriend and I have a job where sometimes it's demanding, you know, sometimes I'm working 45 hour weeks, but I'm not consistently overworked and I work from home. So I am, and I don't have children. <laughs> um, I'm very privileged in the amount of free time I have. I totally recognize that I have way more free time than the average person at this point, And I feel very lucky for that. I honestly don't know how probably a lot of you guys watching have more demanding lives than I do when it comes to kids or more job, like more work or just other things in life. So kudos to you. Let me know how you handle balance because as like a 24 year old, I'm like how am I supposed to balance everything I have to do right now, which will only continue to expand. You know, as I get older, my responsibilities will only continue to expand. So how do we fit everything that we want to do into our lives? Um, I'm very privileged there and I'm still struggling with that question. So please let me know. Um, your approach if you are one of those people who has a lot going on, which is probably the majority of people. Um, so yeah, definitely speaking from my own experience, my own kind of place of privileged free time. Um, and I still am barely scratching the surface of my own kind of thoughts or feelings about this. It's such a deep topic. How we spend our time um, kind of ends up impacting so much of our lives when it comes to, you know, day to day, choosing what hobbies to do, choosing how to spend our time feels more insignificant, but it really adds up to make us who we are. So it's such a big topic. Um, it's so important to kind of think through and determine, um, you know, who we want to be, what we want to do. Um, <laughs> And of course, a lot of that's outside of our control, but gosh, yeah. Okay, I feel like I'm rambling, but I hope that um, maybe my thoughts helps you firm up your own opinions about, um, you know, if you do have ebbs and flows in your knitting motivation, or if you do struggle with finding balance between knitting and kind of the rest of your life, please let me know. Um, I would really love to hear from everyone else's kind of experience about this. I do think that well, me talking at you for 45 minutes or however long this video is, is great in some regards. And hopefully you can get something out of the video from just that. But I think that being able to then read people's comments or share your own experience would just make this, at least for me, a much more impactful experience and conversation. I feel great after talking about this for a little while. I think it's really helped me kind of firm up my own thoughts, but I would also really love to hear from you all. So please, if you are willing to kind of share your own experience down below about how you find that own balance or, or how you find your own balance, or if you're struggling with it and kind of anything that you can share or your own thoughts, I think that there's some really great, amazing, smart people who watch these videos. So I would love, love, love to hear from you as well. Um, and otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are enjoying your um, Sunday or Monday. If you're watching this close to when it's posted, it's Easter Sunday right now, actually. So um, I definitely have to get outside and enjoy that. Um, but yeah. All right. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your week. Okay. Bye.